What's going on guys? Welcome back to my channel. This is Darian with Darian the Dev and in this video we're going to talk about five ways to validate your startup idea. So I'm excited to make this video because I know there's a lot of people out there that watch these videos or that are just on YouTube in general that are learning the code or trying to learn the code because they either want to switch careers and just get a job as a developer, which is totally fine. And there's other people who want to start companies and startups and be a part of building them and they want to know how to code so they can actually build an idea that they have. And I was one of those people. I am one of those people. And I still haven't made a video about my startup yet, but you know, I'm doing a lot of work, guys, so, you know, I, I got to keep certain things private from YouTube, but, you know, part of the reason why I've struggled with YouTube, you know, in the past is because I do run a business and that that's always kind of cut into my time. So um, I, I'm trying to solve that problem with this channel, but I know what I know what it's like. So, you know, I want to share five ways that I personally have used myself and that I know is what anybody would tell you you can pay any consultation entrepreneur uh or you know you can pay for any subscription or you know courses online but this information is pretty much tried and true so i just want to share it right here guys so the first thing you can do one of the most important things you can do to validate that you are on to a good business idea or startup idea is pretty simple ask potential users so since we're talking tech you know what i mean this is pretty much going to be um one of the most helpful things that you can do the reason why you want to do that is because you just don't want to get caught up in your own idea and thinking that because you think it's a great idea that people are just going to naturally use it because nine out of ten times that feeling is going to be wrong you want to actually get out there and 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 basically face rejection or the possibility of rejection because it's going to happen. I don't care how good you think your idea is, rejection is going to happen at some point. So the earlier the better because getting rejected early will help you refine the idea and actually figure out what people really do want if it's not what you think they want. But at the end of the day, asking people is the only way that you can really validate that you have a useful product that solves a problem for people and that they will pay for it or that they will use it at least. So you have to put yourself out there. You have to ask people if, you know, they would use something like blah and then pitch them whatever your business idea is. So the next thing is going to be surveys. So surveys were really, really big for me. Um, I used SurveyMonkey, and it's funny because looking back on it, the first year I started my business, I actually, I actually used like a pretty spammy technique uh, to get some surveys filled out. But it, it kind of did both of these first two things. It was asking my potential users, and it was also doing surveys and getting tangible data about my potential users. So what I needed to do was validate that students would use the idea that I had if it existed, which it didn't at the time. And I had a friend who I was working on this idea with at the time, and he was enrolled at a college here in Detroit called Wayne State University. So what we did was uh, we came with this, this great idea that he could go into his Blackboard account and he could grab like everyone's email address that he ever had a class with he could literally just get like a downloadable csv file of every email of everyone he ever had a class with and so we did that and we sent out this email we wrote up this email basically that had a link to a survey monkey and we blasted it out to like oh man thousands of students that he had classes with you know over his time at wayne state and while we got a lot of insightful data, I mean, you'd be surprised. It was it was crazy. Like, we actually got a lot of responses, like, very quickly, too. So we got a ton of responses, which gave us a lot of valuable data about asking our potential users, invalidating our idea, which, you know, it all worked out in our favor. They actually, they would use the, the, <laughs> the platform. So that's why I'm still working on it. Um, but we also had surveys and, like, actual data to show other people to prove that we weren't crazy and that we had this idea that we had already validated and talked to students about and things like that. So um, to make that story, you know, you know, to, to show you why spamming is not good, we actually got an email from Wayne State saying, hey, 
never use our email service to spam our students like this again. <laughs> so obviously I never did that again and I'm not encouraging anybody to like be spammy about surveys, but the point is whether it's like verbal surveys or survey monkey, you know, even written surveys on like like lined paper or something like that, if you can just however you need to collect your data, just asking users and using surveys to do that. Um, is, is a great way to actually validate that you're on to the right idea, that you're pursuing the right idea. So the next thing after surveys, I would say, is letters of intent. And the reason why I think this is important is because they really show commitment from other people that you can share. And it really, it really forces other people to take you seriously, or at least your idea, because it shows how other people view your idea. They view it in a way that they could picture themselves committing to it, whether that's using it, buying it, whatever your letter of intent is getting someone to you know, commit to, by getting somebody to physically sign their name on a document that supports your idea is a huge, huge benefit, especially when you're going to pitch, whether it's for funding, whether that's VC funding, investment funding, crowdfunding, or if you're trying to just pitch to get a partnership or something, if you have other people on board who have physically signed documents, those are super important. So these letters of intent, you want them to be from stakeholders for sure. Whether, I don't know, whatever industry you're in, you want it to be important people who are signing these documents, decision makers. So decision makers that's that's who these people should be who are signing these documents they should definitely be decision makers and and i feel like if you can do those things if you can get decision makers or stakeholders to actually sign letters of intent that goes a long way for just proving that you need to keep building this idea you need to keep going you need to keep trying to expand you need to keep trying to you know cr create the most optimized solution possible because you're on to solving a really big problem that people will pay you for eventually so letters of intent next one i'm going to say beta tests or trials whoops so the next one is beta tests or trials and obviously that one's that one's pretty key like you're gonna have things you need to work out in your platform whether it's just like weird bugs that are hard to find that you don't know are in there right now you want to figure that out early uh you're also gonna you know figure out things about the user experience no matter how much vetting you do up front you're going to have you know feedback about your user experience and how it can be better and you really want to get that feedback because you just can't predict how people are going to use your platform you can you can think things through in your mind as a user but again you just never know how people are actually going to interpret the instructions of how to use the platform if there are any because in the beginning when you first have like a minimum viable product you might not even have on-screen instructions yet you might not even have you know a, a way to guide users through the platform as far as maybe like welcome videos or how-to videos stuff like that you might not have those things so you need to get pilot tests beta tests whatever you want to call them or trial periods in because that will really you know on top of validating the idea that people will actually try it out and use it it'll also allow people to tell you how it can be better or at least a better experience for them and that'll make them want to come back it'll make them uh really trust you if you take that feedback and go improve upon it and bring it back to them it'll build loyalty make them realize you really do want to build the best product for them and it'll go a long way so definitely make sure you can find some type of users to get you know their hands on your product last thing is going to be the most obvious one but it is going to be a purchase the reason why a purchase is more important than letters of intent or asking potential users or beta test trials, all that good stuff is because it actually builds income for the business. It actually is revenue for the business. So if people are willing to pay you money for some service or product that you offer, nine out of 10 times, you either have covered the other bases of doing surveys, talking to customers, solving the, like figuring out what the problem is, solving the problem, presenting the solution, all those things, nine out of 10 times, if people are already giving you money for something, then you know some of that other stuff already, or you just need to refine it a little bit more 
um, and make more money. But for the most part, if people are paying you for something, then you've identified a problem, you have a solution that works, and there's more people out there who will pay you for it, and you just need to figure out how to reach them. So with that being said, a lot of companies actually take a you know a long time to actually get their first customer or make that first dollar. But for you, what you have the chance to do is you know go out, ask potential users, uh, get letters of intent, you know do surveys, get pilots and beta tests, and then you can get your first customer, you know within two or three years maybe, depending on what industry you're in. And if that's the case, you're in a better situation than you know places like Uber, Netflix, or lift because you actually can operate on your own capital and you won't be indebted to investors so um anyway guys that's my little rant on you know entrepreneurship i want to make more videos like this because i'm really passionate about entrepreneurship as well as development i want to kind of integrate more of this stuff into the channel so hopefully you like this guys let me know if this was helpful at all leave me some comments down below in the comment section and make sure you guys check out the freebies down in the description section below uh, again, guys, this is Darian with Darian the Dead. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe if this content was helpful because that really helps me stay motivated to keep coming up with this content and creating it for you guys. But, yep, this was five ways to validate your startup idea. This is Darian with Darian the Dev, and I'll see you guys in the next video, all right? Peace.